Welcome to another episode of Eat Smoke Drink. Today is a glass review episode. Um, I've decided to buy this particular glass. It is the Elixir Distillers 1920s Professional Blenders Glass. So obviously this shape is not, I don't think they invented this shape. I think they based it on uh, an older design and revived it, so to speak. Um, so you can get this quite really available online. Um, it's everywhere. Um, the Elixir's one is from the Whiskey Exchange, but the shape itself um, is what I'm actually after today. Um, and I'm like usual, I'm going to um, review it with the Glen Can and the um, Blender's Glass. Now, I've tried this before, before this review, because I want to see what it was like, and but I want to take you through it as well. I'm using a triple distilled Hazelburn Barolo because a triple distilled has more subtle flavors, so it really highlights the power of the glass as well, or the lack of for that matter. So let's start with the Glen Can. I'm very familiar with the Glen Can. Now let's go with the blender's glass. I'm going to be completely honest with this glass. It is as of late one of the better, one of the best glasses I have actually used, this blender's glass. Yes, it is bigger and it is harder to transport, but it is absolutely exceptional. The nosing ability of the blender's glass is just phenomenal. I mean, I can't... I mean, look, the Glen Can is good. But the amount of flavors you pick up from the blender's glass is absolutely phenomenal. There's no comparison. It's just, it's just so different. And even with just a subtle whiskey, a relatively subtle whiskey, nothing too heavy, not peated, it is so prominent what you're getting in there. You're getting so many more, so many more notes and flavors than you would the Glen Can. Now the interesting thing about it is this. It is also a very novelty looking glass. You look at it and you go, oh, look at that. It's a bit strange, like a bulbous wine glass. And it kind of is. I mean, I don't even doubt for a second that it would work for wine as well, but you know, I'm not here to do to, to endorse that. But I am telling you right now that after trying this and before this review, I've actually decided that when I have rare and quite premium whiskies to review, and look, I know that I review mostly premium whiskies, quite unquote premium whiskies. I do review some a lot of accessible whiskies as well because I don't think that price tag is necessarily what determines good but if I'm going to review something novelty and something rare or something that requires a little bit more attention and love I'm actually going to use this glass from now on that's how much I am endorsing this glass I can't believe how good it is like I think I think it is because the large surface area allows for a lot more adhesion and then the opening is actually slightly smaller than the Glen Can, so it's quite intense. But when I tried this with different whiskies in a tasting, what I noticed was you have to be wary as well. Is your nose very sensitive to smell? If it is, then it could be overwhelming for you. I think that requires, I mean, that not requires, but I think that can be sorted with a bit of self-training and self-practice to sniff and nose. But what I've noticed is that regardless if it's peated, sherried or not, this is really, really good. But yes, you do get a focused, focused sense of smell from this glass. But I'm telling you, absolutely excellent. I absolutely love this glass. So you're going to start seeing this glass more and on my channel, featured on my channel in the near future. And until then, it gets my thumbs up and my tick of approval. Don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell. See you again.